So Halloween Kills is out and I didn't like the film, it did divide the fan base. I did a video talking about how I think Halloween H2O is better than the new Halloween films, the two of them. But we as Halloween fans, we can all join hands, we can all unite and just agree in solidarity about this film. Halloween Resurrection. Let's talk about the dumbest movie in the Halloween franchise. I damn. What the hell somebody got to do to get a little decent help up in this motherfucker? It's one of the most bonehead horror movies out there. And I've seen the Children of the Corn sequels. And I've seen the Hellraiser sequels. And it's just as bonehead as any of them. If not more. Of course it tells the story of a group of people in the early 2000s. Early reality TV wanting to do a web show from the house of Michael Myers. And of course it starts off with Michael killing off Laurie. Because of course he didn't die at the end of Halloween H2O. Even though... We were there to believe in every kind of way possible that he did. And of course at the start of the film we get this wonderful, glorious, fantastic, incredible, believable explanation as to why Michael Myers didn't actually die at the end of page 2 Oh my god, she killed the wrong person. <laughs> Father of three. Why didn't the paramedics say something? His larynx had been crushed. I've heard more believable and intriguing explanations for things by Donald Trump. The whole thing just falls apart. Like, remember in Home H2O, where Laurie knocked Michael off the balcony and then came down the stairs in five seconds? Yeah, in that five seconds, a pa paramedic ran in, like Billy Whiz, and tried to revive Michael. All oh, while Laurie's coming down the stairs, like, just literally normal speed. You watch the film, she comes down the stairs. Is about 10 seconds. Then Michael gets him, pushes him against the wall, crushes his larynx, because Michael's got this weird plan of, what, shit, what can I do? Fuck. Crush his larynx. Like, just like, trying to do his best to think on the spot, Michael Myers. In 10 seconds. This is some incredible shit. Michael Myers should have been laughly. And then Myers just flees, but he hangs on the scene, dressed as a paramedic. Like some kind of rubbing it in their face. Arrogant bastard. And then just sneaks off into the woods and no one sees any problems with this. That the paramedic looks like some kind of bizarre madman. And he just sneaks off into the woods randomly. The paramedic was in the band of Lori. Don't know why he sat up and tried to kill her, but who knows. Don't know how he survived falling through the wind stream. Maybe Michael transferred his mutant abilities onto this paramedic by, by holding him by the throat. I don't know. Maybe it was like Halloween 6 where he passed on... The curse to him. That ruins that whole H2 ending, which I really like. But that's a great ending. You know, it's an iconic image. Michael Myers reaching out for his sister and then getting his head chopped off. Brilliant stuff. And Mustafa Arkad, God rest his soul, tricked everyone and actually put a clause into it where you can't kill Michael Myers. Now, I don't know if that clause still exists. So David Gordon Green might come up against the same bullshit because he hasn't been able to kill Michael Myers yet either. So Laurie's been put in a psychiatric ward, don't know what happened to her son, John. He's just hiding out in the hills or went to the Bahamas or something, I don't know. Because Michael let him go, casually. And then Michael goes and tries to get Laurie in. Michael's now swapped his mask for the Adam West Batman eyebrows. Like he's literally got drawn on eyebrows like Adam West. I know all the other masks had eyebrows, but this is so prominent. They had the Adam West Batman bloody eyebrows. Michael's now got booth on hair. Looks like me if I let my hair grow. But just, what's going on here? Michael's like, changed his appearance entirely as he does. Well, he did it multiple times in H2O. You can see his eyes completely now. There's not even an effort to get rid of the eyes. This is just eye to eye with Michael Myers. I mean, I think you could say this is possibly the worst mask. Because even if you think of Halloween 4, even though it looks like data from Star Trek, it's still a sort of creepiness in that white emotionless face. You can't see his eyes. Halloween 5 looks like Nick Cage, quite literally. But again, it's pale and it's emotionless, you don't see the eyes. This, again, the multiple masks of H2O were shoddy. But then this, clear as day eyes and then Adam West eyebrows. Unforgivable, absolute joke. So Michael stabs Laurie, finally kills her off. So basically what they were going to do, they were going to have the reason be that um, the H2O killer wasn't actually Michael Myers, it was a copycat. Someone who was obsessed with Michael came after 
Laurie Strode. What I would have actually done is spun off from that idea and had the real Michael and an imitator. So there was an imitator that came back to chase Laurie, but then there was the actual real Michael, and that would be my explanation. So Michael was doing some of the killing, the imitator was doing some of them. And then in this one, obviously when Michael comes back, because she cut off the head of the, the imitator. So that is a better explanation in my book. I know it's still a load of old ass, but if you're gonna do it, just do that. You know, at least it's somewhat plausible and gets you out of the woods somehow in you know in the smallest way you can make it an acceptable explanation. Then Michael gives the knife to this mental patient on the ward, just carry on my legacy brother, and then he goes home. This this movie is the beginning of Michael going home, which we saw in Halloween Kills very prominently. He does it first here in Halloween Resurrection, but yeah, Michael goes home just to sit on his own playing drafts with the mice. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Or the Halloween Kills Michael who just wants to look out of his window. He wants to look out of his window, all right? Don't bother him. I think he's still there, actually. Hello, darkness, my old friend. We've got Buster Rhymes and Tyra Banks who are innovators of this new web show technology and they bring a bunch of kids who are willing to stay overnight in the childhood home of Michael Myers. These kids include Bianca Kaslich and Katie Sackhoff and a bunch of others but none of them are worth mentioning the actors names. I find it hard looking back at this movie whether I need to consider it dated or whether I need to consider it forward thinking because obviously if you were watching it at the time it would be forward thinking if you're watching it now it seems very dated. Like, the fact that this was revolutionary technology is a, a laugh now, it's a joke. Because obviously we've seen how far reality TV went. In a way, this movie predicted what we would see with all the ghost adventure shows and, you know, all this stuff. And found footage and documentaries, reality TV. In a way, it was forward thinking. And the thing is, the shame about this film is the concept is very good. As long as it wasn't following a you know, big grand ends to a Halloween franchise and it was just a random Halloween movie. I like the concept. Michael Myers in a house with a group of people and you can watch it online. It was quite a revolutionary concept. It's just that the, it didn't belong to do it at this time because we can't carry on from H2O this way. And also it was delivered so badly. It's really delivered badly, this film. Buster Rhymes was obviously cast because we had LL Cool J and Halloween H2O give quite a good performance. So we went, they like the rappers. So let's have another rapper in a Halloween movie. But the problem with Buster Rhymes in this film is he's pretty much the main focus. He's kind of the main character. He's kind of just dominates the screen and just tries to be the man in every scene that he's in. And it's really, really distracting. Like, we don't need this. Let the danger tainment begin up. They try and have Bianca Kaslich be the new Laurie Strode, but she's not very endearing. And then we have Katie Sackhoff debut here. And Katie Sackhoff goes on to admit that she's never watched this film in her entirety. The only time she ever watched it was reacting to it on her YouTube channel. And it's just done really badly. Like if you'd have got some interesting characters, you'd have made us like them. This could have been a really tense, you know, terrifying film, actually. Seriously, Buster Rhymes can fuck off in this. There are so many scenes where Buster Rhymes either talks down about Michael Myers or has a scene where he's quite literally in front of Michael Myers because he tries to come in dressed as Michael to fool the kids. Tell you to be Michael Myers? I'm playing Michael Myers! If them kids come around and see us dressed up in the same shit, you're gonna ruin the whole effect, huh? You don't get it? You don't get it? Yo, shit ain't working up there or something? I left the back door unlocked for your ass to go out the back into the garage. That's what I did. You need to get the hell out of here. Go ahead, scoop, skedaddle. Get the fuck out of Dodge. Michael literally stands there and goes, yeah, I respect you. And walks off and lets him live as some kind of just humbled kid. Like he's really humbled. It's like Deontay Wilder after he lost to Tyson Fury, but, and just walked off. Like, he respects him now. Like, what's going on here? Like, why has Michael Myers got respect for Buster Rhymes? Did he just think, I can't come back to him, because if I don't, he's going to lay out some bars and destroy me lyrically? Some of the kills are okay. Like, Michael Myers has this underground lair, which some of the guests 
discover and then he stalks this girl and kills her in this underground lair, pushes her against this kind of gate with a spike. And we find out Michael's been living underneath his house. Don't know why you're living down there, Mike. You've got perfectly good upstairs. And he also cuts off Katie Sackhoff's head in this, which is quite a memorable scene. Come on, any beheading in a slasher film has got a memorable. And that head falls all the way down the stairs. And it's kind of the moment where the characters realise this is not a game, it's all real. So it's quite a kind of impressive big spectacle of a kill you know that makes you feel like shit is now on you you like watching parts of this because you're like the concept is pretty darn good but you've been disgraced by the use of the character michael the explanation at the start of the film the buster rhymes degradation the terrible mask the terrible dialogue the unlikable characters the only thing to like in this is the idea somewhat and the combination just gets worse and worse starts off quite exciting gets pretty bad like where Buster Rhymes kicks Michael Myers through a window like Jackie Chan wanna fuck with me huh wanna fuck up <laughs> man you are one pathetic loser so they end up outside and Sarah grabs a chainsaw and I've, I've just struggled to get behind this character you want to like her because she's you know, she's nothing wrong with her, but she's a poor, poor man's Laurie Strode, basically. This is for Jack! This is for Ray! For all of them! For all of them! Then, of course, we get the scene that this movie is known for. Every of you in the world plays the scene. I'm not going to play it because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, here you go. Trick or treat, motherfucker. The bloody parody is Buster Rhymes show. It's literally Buster Rhymes. I reckon they went, what do you want to put in the script, Buster? Because we've got nothing. Okay, I'm going to say trick or treat, motherfucker. I'm going to kick Michael Myers through a window. I'm just going to be the man of this film. You know, the more you watch this film, the more you realise it, it was set up to promote Buster Rhymes and make Michael Myers look like a complete dickhead. Michael gets thrown into electricity and he's just like some goon. Michael Myers is not a soundbite, a spin-off, a tie-in, some kind of celebrity scandal. Michael Myers is a killer shark. I don't know what you're talking while you had any fear, mate, because you were kicking his ass. I go, Michael Myers... <laughs> I don't sweat him for a franchise which was trying to hold on to some prestige with Halloween H2O. For a franchise that even in Halloween 4, 5 and 6 lost some prestige but held on to some. This is just sacrificing the character in a just terrifying, disgusting ceremony of <laughs> to destroy Michael Myers. I really think there were some good ideas in Halloween Resurrection. As I say, the concept is really good. Maybe this concept with Jason or Freddy would have been better, I don't know, but you can't follow up one of the most iconic Halloween films, one of the best Halloween endings with this. It just wasn't the right follow up. So even though we're all disagreeing about Halloween kills, I'm sure we can all agree. I'll be blown away if anyone out there, who even people who enjoy the movie, and I can get some enjoyment out of some scenes, surely you'd say this is the dumbest Halloween movie ever. Thanks for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments what you think about Halloween Resurrection. Is it the dumbest Halloween movie ever made? Subscribe as always and I'll see you guys next time.